What are we into this morning? Well, I went down to the post-Cabinet press conference uh, yesterday and it's always exciting to see who Chris Luxon will bring out alongside him to do the heavy lifting because he tends to run it. He'll grab a member of the Cabinet. Or if you've got something that we can sell today, come down. And uh, I can tell you that uh, yesterday it was Chris Bishop. Uh, and uh, I'm pretty sure Minister of Housing, if they still got one. And Chris Bishop was saying some pretty tough stuff, tough stuff, about recalcitrant state house tenants. To explain what it was all about, we're indeed joined uh, by Chris Bishop uh, on the phone now. Uh, Chris, good morning to you. Thank you for joining us on the platform. Good morning. Good to see you. All right. Um, what is the deal here? What prompted your, um, my understanding is, written instructions or directives to Kayanga Ora, or Housing New Zealand, as I think it used to be called, uh, what have you told them to do apart from their job? <laughs> yeah, so we've written a letter of expectation myself and Minister of Finance, Nicola Willis, as the shareholding ministers for Kainga Ora, and we've basically said to them, you need to scrap your sustaining tenancies policy or framework. Okay, for those who don't know, what law. was that? What was that sustaining tenancies framework? So that, that, is, that is basically, a, a, it started with the best intentions and goodwill, which is that, it should be it should be very hard to get get kicked out of a kind of aura uh, property, yeah. and so kind of aura that therefore doesn't use the tools available to every other landlord in the Residential Tenancies Act uh, for when it comes to disruptive tenants. So they, they it's not they don't completely not use it, but they basically don't use it, and that has had the effect, uh, in our view, of essentially incentivising some quite extraordinary bad behaviour by a minority of Kainga Ora tenants. And everyone listening will have seen some of the stories in the, you know, the mainstream media over the last uh, few years. Hey, Minister, about, can um, I just ask making... you, for, in the interest of talking to the platform audience, can we call them state house tenants? Because that's what they are, aren't they? Yeah, they are. They yeah, are yeah. state house tenants. Yeah. Yeah, social social housing that. or state house tenants. Yeah. Yep, yep, okay. So you had a bunch, how many state house tenants, because of the sustaining tenancies policies, were just, you know, terrible, terrible tenants that would have got kicked out of, of the private sector? Can you give us a figure? How many? Well, it's, it's, it's impossible to know with accuracy, but let, let me tell you that in the, uh, on average, there are th over 300 serious incidences um, per month from November through to January um, this year, November, no, last year to January 2024. Yeah. And what would you, and, what and, would you and class all, as a serious all, incident? Oh, harassment, intimidation. Um, this is not just kind of, you know, throwing poo on the neighbour's lawn. This is quite serious. Yeah. Um, and in last year, in 2023, um, there were only three evictions from final order of property. All right. So a very small no. group of people then... Very small. It's not they don't use it. It's just that it's very hard to. It's very very hard to get booted out of a kind or a property. Far harder than than private landlords would um, would use the law. All right, no doubt about it. So does this mean all these people are going to get booted out, or is the feeling that if and this isn't a change in law, if the current policies are applied more stringently, behaviour will improve. Very much the latter, so no one wants to be booting people out, but you do have to have that as a backstop in case things, you know, re people just persistently and willfully break the law and cause mayhem for their neighbours. If, if the government at some point doesn't say enough's enough, I'm sorry, sling your hook, see you later, um, then, you know, unsurprisingly, people will behave badly because if they know there's no consequences for bad behaviour, um, people will behave badly. And so this is about reinforcing the expectation that society has that if you have a taxpayer-funded state house, uh, you treat it with respect, you treat it well, mm. and you treat your neighbours well. And I don't think that's an unreasonable point of view, to be honest. Um, I think most Kiwis would say, yep, fair enough, there's a role for state housing, we need it, but also you should treat the home and your neighbours and your friends around you with respect yeah. And, yeah. And, and not abuse them. All right. So I think that's pretty reasonable. This came up in the press conference yesterday, and, and I thought it was a reasonable line of questioning. Uh, kids are not responsible for the crappy behaviours of their parents. Um, I'd hate to think that this change in policy would put an innocent child or make them homeless. Well, we don't want that. And the message to people who um, have kids who are behaving like this is stop doing that for the sake of your children and for the sake of wider society. And you've got to remember as well... well otherwise, there are we will make your kids homeless. Well, you've got to remember there are hundreds of... 
Oh, hang on. They are it? waiting for a state house, and yeah. they don't get access to one, and they stare at the people down the street um, who are behaving badly and abusing their neighbours, and they say, well, hang on a minute. Well, why do they get access to a state house when I'm in a motel yeah. and I behave well? So there's a basic fairness issue here. Can I ask you, Minister, um, anecdotally or, or, or by record, uh, do gang mem- are gang members allowed to be state house tenants? Yes, they are. Uh, are gang members responsible for some of the serious incidents that happen in the bad behaviour? I don't have any written advice to that effect, but I think if you... Mo- uh, anecdotally, certainly the feedback is that um, some gang members occupying kind or properties um, behave badly, yes. OK. Why doesn't this government say if you're a member of a gang you don't get a state house if it wants to get tough on gangs? Well, uh, we've got a, a wide program of uh, activity to disrupt gangs, as you know, from banning patches to non-consorting orders to a variety of different things around guns that Mark Mitchell and Paul Goldsmith are in charge of. We haven't considered... Um, State House access as a gang member. Um, sometimes, sometimes what will happen is uh, someone will have a tenancy and um, it won't be a gang member who actually has the tenancy, but the people who stay at the house are gang members. So that gets tricky. Um, th- these are these are difficult issues, with, and we're dealing with difficult yeah. people. Well, I've um, got to say, anecdotally, from the people I talk to have been in these situations over many years, having a gang member or a gang associate in the state house next door often doesn't work out well. It doesn't work out well, and that's why we're asking Kaina Ora to take a tougher line on them. Yeah.